Hello everyone, now let us continue with our 2.5 exercise class 9 NCRT. We were about to do question number 8 for which we need to factorize this given equation expression. Now since the numbers are in cubes, so we need to check the perfect cubes here. Obviously this will be a a plus b whole cube. Let's just check it by putting as per the identity. We can see that yes, we are getting the same. 12a square b. See here students, our question actually is solved here itself. We are just checking by writing this. You have to write this by the way. But we are actually checking that if these are equal or not. If these are equal, that means we are going correctly. If these are not equal, that means we have done some mistake here. Okay. As per a plus b whole cube, we have got these three factors here. Okay. The second part is exactly same. Just remember the signs okay that I'll be covering in this part first of all check the cubes so we have got our answer right here we will just check the other two parts if we are going correctly or not okay so yes we are going correct so these are the factors of this equation okay expression this one is also a very easy one just we need to check for the fractions here okay so this is a cube minus b cube we have got our answer let's check it for further minus 3 a square b plus 3 b square a okay so this is the required answer understood now moving on to next question that is question number 9 okay see we need to prove that x cube minus y cube is equal to this expression okay we just have to prove the lhs and rhs to be equal so i'm taking the rhs here and i'll apply the distributive property like this okay so we will get our are uh, LHS. So this is the proof and therefore since we have applied distributive property here and we have proved that x cube minus y cube is this much therefore we can apply this x cube minus y cube as a identity, new identity. So that's why I have given you this uh, during the chart of identity I have given you this 9th and 10th identity remember. Now applying these two identities we have question number 10 that is 64 m cube minus 343 n cube now we know that 4 cube is 64 and 7 cube is for 343 therefore by applying x cube minus y cube identity we got our answer okay so this is the required answer understood i'm doing the second part here first part is your homework of course now question number 11 we need to factorize these expressions so for that we have our eighth identity that is x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3xyz can be written as x plus y plus z into x square plus y square plus z square minus xy minus yz minus xz okay so this is the required answer understood i hope you have understood this part i will give you another question as homework do this as your homework okay now next question we need to verify something that this is equal to is equal to this okay now we will again take the RHS to solve it and get LHS here because RHS is a complex number we can solve it to become a simpler uh, expression okay LHS is a simpler one so we will find we will not find easy to make a simple equation convert into a complex one. Solving a complex equation into simple simple one is easier. But of course we can do from LHS also. You see what I am doing here? I have expanded x minus y whole square. Similarly y minus z whole square. Okay. So after solving the like terms we will get this. Now we will take out the 2 as common. Now 2 will get cancelled. Now see here we will apply the 8th identity. Remember this is actually equal to the LHS as per the identity. I'm writing here identity 8 but you have to use the whole identity you have to write okay using the identity that one now again question number 13 it is given that x plus y plus z is 0 then by applying the 8th identity we get this okay now as per the question this term is 0 actually therefore this whole term will be 0 only therefore this is the required answer and we needed to prove this only understood now move on, moving on to question number 14 we will be using the result of question number 13 to find the these cubes okay 
since their addition is zero, therefore sum of their cubes will be three into sum of those numbers. Uh, mul three into product of those numbers. Okay. Similarly, we can do the rest of the parts. Now let's move on to the next part in which area of a rectangle is given and what we need to do here we need to calculate the length and the breadth so actually what we need to do we need to factorize this equation because length and breadth are the factors of area yes so we will apply the splitting the middle term here see students in this type of question we need two numbers yes such that their product is 25 into 12 and their sum is or the difference is 35 yes minus 35 so I'll go with the prime factors here where 3 5 is a 15 we have and 4 5 is a 20 we have yes this 2 into 2 into 5 that is 20 so these are the two numbers we can take because by adding them we get minus 35 okay now taking common and writing the common part here this is the required answer so these are the length and the breadth so uh, it is not defined which is the length and which is breadth actually but still we usually take the length to be greater than breadth therefore this is the required answer okay now the next question is also similar but this time volume is given and as per the formula of volume the length and breadth and height are the factors of volume yes so we will factorize this equation this expression now students I hope you remember that the first step is always taking out common so 4k we can take common okay and thus we will get this equation and 5 and 3 was the golden numbers understood so y we can take common and from that side minus 1 should be multiplied so these are the required factors of this volume okay so we can take any of them as length breadth or height yes so I hope you have understood the concept behind this exercise. This is the end of this exercise as well as this chapter. Okay. Thank you. Stay tuned for more.